Hey guys, I hope you were watching last night's Democratic debate, but even if you weren't, don't worry, we've got you covered. Here are our top three fave moments from last night's Democratic debate. Number one was climate change. Now we haven't heard much about climate change in the debates recently, so it's nice to see climate change get a mention from Emily Allett from the YouTube channel Minute Earth. She got to ask this awesome question about how the United States was going to combat greenhouse gases. Hello from Minute Earth. Fossil fuels have long kept our cars moving and our light bulbs lit. But we now know that burning these fuels releases heat trapping gases that are warming the planet, causing seas to rise and contributing to extreme weather events like South Carolina's devastating flooding last year. Fighting human-caused climate change means giving up our global addiction to fossil fuels and shifting the bulk of the world's energy supply to alternative sources. Some countries have acted decisively to make this transition, but here at home we still get a whopping 82% of our energy from coal, oil, and natural gas. In the US, political gridlock, pressure from industry lobbyists, and insufficient R&D have made an already tough battle against climate change even tougher. Senator Sanders, Americans love their SUVs, which spiked in sales last year as gas prices plummeted. How do you convince Americans that the problem of climate change is so urgent that they need to change their behavior? Now, it was brilliant to see all the candidates commit themselves to stopping climate change. They don't even have the courage the decency to listen to the scientists. It is beyond my comprehension how we can elect the president of the United States, somebody like Trump, who believes that climate change is a hoax invented by the Chinese. But the debate itself around this issue was pretty thin. On this stage tonight, this democratic stage, where we actually believe in science, <laughs> We know that every Democratic candidate on that stage is going to say that they believe in climate science, as they should. But given the close demonstrated link between an unstable climate and destabilization in the Middle East, more on that in the description, I would have hoped that at least one of the candidates would have said something substantial about how they were really going to tackle climate change. Unfortunately, it was just not my night. But the good news is, as John Ayadola pointed out in a tweet about the climate debate, Whoever you support, these three candidates accept that climate science is a thing. Quick hat tip to John Ayadola for representing the entire internet in the debate last night. It was a YouTube co-sponsored debate, which means there was a lot of YouTube presence, and John had their heavy burden of representing YouTube in the before and after coverage. Nice work, John. Fave science moment number two was another question from YouTube. It seems like the YouTubes were having a better night than the moderators last night. It was a tech question from tech reviewer MKBHD, and he asked about this fight between our right to privacy and international security. I think America's future success is tied to getting all kinds of tech right. Tech companies are responsible for the encryption technology to protect personal data, but the government wants a back door into that information. So do you think it's possible to find common ground and where do you stand on privacy versus security? This is such an interesting issue because for the first time ever in our history, private companies are out teching the government. They have more advanced technology than what the government has. So the government can't just take the data at once, it has to ask nicely. Martin O'Malley came in with a great answer, basically saying no matter where the government gets its information from, it needs to have a warrant. What he says was, doesn't matter if they come in through the back door or the front door. And everyone on the Twitter was just like, back door. My third and final favorite science moment was about universal healthcare. Now, this is a tough issue for me because I'm from Australia where we have universal healthcare. So I believe it's a good thing. I've spoken before on this channel about how broken the US healthcare system is and how that leads to a lower quality of life for everyone who lives in America, which now includes myself. The candidates spoke a lot about this thing called a single payer system. And if you're not familiar with the system, it's basically like Costco for healthcare. The idea is the government, rather than individuals, is paying for the majority of our healthcare costs. So rather than us individuals each buying like one hip replacement, the government says, okay, we're gonna need a million hip replacements in the whole year, so who can give me the best price on a million? And then they get a better price. Now, everyone on the stage agreed we needed to do a better job on healthcare, so bravo to all the candidates. And while I support a single payer system, I think Hillary Clinton had a really good point. 
getting to universal healthcare is really difficult to do. I mean, we've basically been trying since World War II and we're still not quite there yet. And so while I personally support Bernie Sanders idea of a universal healthcare single payer system, I think maybe Hillary's plan had the best chance of success, at least in the short term. As with every debate, Psyche was running a live Twitter fact check on TYT's live coverage of the debate. So make sure you check that out for the next one. So those are my three favorite science moments of the debate. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite moments are. I would love to get your opinion. My third and final favorite, my third, <sighs> Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.